Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Han and I am a professional embroidery artist. I just want to take a really quick second to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed so far to this channel. I think we're sitting at just over 8,000 subscribers right now, which is... What the heck? So thank you so much to everybody who is following along and now we will hop right into today's video. So today's video is all about how to embroider your own pair of shoes. These are going to be my top tips and tricks for how to complete your first shoe embroidery project. I embroider upwards of 10 pairs of shoes a week and I've been doing shoe embroidery as my full-time job for about six years now. So... That's a lot of pairs of shoes. So my first tip for you would be to practice embroidering on a thinner fabric before moving straight onto shoe embroidery, especially if you have not embroidered anything before. If you would consider yourself an intermediate embroidery artist, you can kind of ignore this step. This is mainly for beginners who may not have picked up a needle and thread before. There are so many stitches and variations of stitches that you may want to include on your shoes, but they will definitely vary in difficulty depending on what they are. For example, a satin stitch Stitch, just a straight back and forth stitch to fill a certain area is much easier than let's say a French knot stitch. A French knot stitch will inevitably take a lot more work to perfect than just a regular back and forth stitch and I cannot stress enough how many really great free resources there are on YouTube where artists and creators go into great depth to explain certain stitches and this is where I shamelessly plug my own YouTube tutorials where I explain how to embroider on shoes. But seriously, Seriously, by practicing on thinner materials like muslin fabric, dish towels, any kind of towels really, they're quite thin fabric, and just practicing little flowers here and there, you'll be able to perfect those stitches before moving onto your shoes and it'll just make the finished product so more polished and you'll definitely be glad that you did. So my second tip for you is to choose your shoes wisely. So I think that high top Converse All Stars really wear the crown when it comes to embroidery on sneakers. They're also super popular among people that paint shoes for a living and I think the main reason for them being so popular among artists is because they're like the perfect blank canvas. This whole area right here is just begging for some art, some embroidery, some paint and then you know just do a little something with the logo and you are good to go. Do keep in mind that some parts of the shoe can be a lot harder to embroider than other parts of the shoe. The heel section of the shoe has this little rubber insert that comes out to about this far and it comes out to about this far on the outside of the shoe so you want to avoid any design that requires you to embroider right here because getting the needle through this little sucker is so hard and I would not recommend it. I also work on van shoes quite often. I tend to stick to the low top vans authentics with the laces but I do also work on slip on vans quite often as well. Just keep in mind there's less of a space to work with on low top shoes and I would recommend sticking to low top van shoes if you are wanting to work with vans because some of the high top shoes have little puffy areas around the ankle and I don't know what that's made of but it's very very hard to get the needle through that fabric. Also keep in mind that if you are wanting to work on the slip-on version of these vans, if you are wanting to work on a section of the shoe that is nearer the toe section, you're going to have to be able to fit your hand into that shoe to pull the needle up and through the fabric. So just keep that in mind, it kind of just narrows down your surface area that you're able to work on even more. So yeah I would definitely say stick with the all-star chucks and keep in mind not all models of the high top combo us are create equal. I say that because I've worked a lot on the vintage 70s chucks and they're made of a much thicker fabric, much thicker than these All Stars, and it is much harder for the needle to travel through that fabric for some reason, even though they look so sick with embroidery. It takes me, uh, a professional shoe embroidery artist, at least twice the amount of time to embroider a pair of vintage 70s than it does to embroider a pair of these Chuck All Stars. So just keep that in mind. My third tip for you would be to have a pattern or some kind of inspiration in mind before you start embroidering on your shoes. So have yourself a little scroll through Pinterest, have yourself a scroll through Instagram. You'll definitely be able to find some really great inspiration on Pinterest for flowers, for all kinds of designs but mostly for stitches. And this will also help you in doing research for what kind of flowers and what kind of stitches you wanna put on your own shoes. So I'm quite a visual person and I like to have something in front of me. If I'm working on a new design or a new concept, I like to have something in front of me that I can pull from. So either a photo of the flowers or a photo of some kind of layout. So I know exactly what I'm doing when I'm embroidering onto the shoe, especially if I'm coming up with a new design because I do have most of my designs memorized 
at this point, but you have to keep in mind that you have quite a small surface area that you can work with on the shoes. So one or two awkwardly placed flowers or stems and you've kind of mucked up the entire space. And you're gonna set yourself up for a really hard time to make the shoe look cohesive. I actually recently released a few downloadable PDF embroidery patterns specifically for shoes. And these PDF designs are based on some of my best selling designs. Each of these PDFs comes with super detailed instructions. I'm talking 25, 26 pages of written instructions telling you exactly how to create that specific design on a shoe. I also tested these PDFs out on some beginner embroidery artists and they were able to create some really beautiful shoes in the end. I really do think it's important to have something in mind when you are working on the shoe. Even if you're not super artistic and you're not able to sketch something out for you to work from, as long as you have a general idea of I want four daisies and three sunflowers on the outside of the shoe, I'm just saying it's probably not a very good idea to go in blind and wing the entire thing, especially if this is your first ever embroidery project. I will have the links to my downloadable PDFs listed in the description below if you are interested in grabbing one of those. I believe they're currently on sale and I will also be releasing a few more designs in the coming weeks, so keep your eye out for those. So the fourth tip kind of ties into number three and that is to choose your color scheme before you start stitching on the shoes. This might seem kind of obvious to some of you, but for me, when I first started embroidery, I was just kind of winging it the whole time. And while that can be fine, I have discovered over the years that it is much better for you to pick out a cohesive color scheme before starting the project. And it tends to end up in a much more aesthetically pleasing end product, especially when you choose colors that really complement each other, which I think is much easier to do in the design process rather than when you're working on a shoe and you're just like, I'll throw in this pink color and see how it works. In the downloadable PDFs that I recently released, I do give tips for picking a cohesive color scheme. And I also give you the exact color combinations that I used on that specific pair of shoes. My fifth tip is going to be make sure you have all the supplies you need before you start your shoe embroidery project. I did actually make an entire video on this and I will link it right here. But I did wanna say in this video that you may have a relative or somebody that you live with that does a lot of sewing by hand, maybe they repair clothing in your house or something like that, and you'll actually be able to use a lot more of their supplies than you might think. And what I mean by that is all you really need is a needle and some thread. And another non-negotiable that I'm gonna throw in is a finger protector. You can actually wear one of these on your middle finger and on your thumb as well if you're struggling to pull the needle through the shoe fabric. I like to just wear them on my index finger. I think that it makes it easier for me to pull the needle through the fabric, and it also gives me the same amount of control as if I weren't wearing anything on my finger at all, which I really like because it still lets me work quite quickly. But I am not kidding when I say this will save your life when you are embroidering your first pair of shoes. I think they make them in a bunch of different fabrics. There are leather ones, there are metal ones. I like these because it doesn't make me any slower when I'm embroidering. Kind of just feels like an extension of my finger. So let me amend that essentials list. You need a finger protector, at least one. You need a needle and you need some thread. And really you can just go from there especially if you're super artistic and you have a vision in mind and you found the right colored threads in your grandma's sewing kit you're good to go but in the supplies video that i mentioned before i did list a couple of supplies that you might not think of such as this erasable embroidery pen that disappears when it is exposed to water there are a few little things that you might not think of that will make your life so much easier especially when you're creating your first couple of shoe embroidery projects and you might just need a little extra helping hand and my very last tip for you would be to make Make sure you give yourself enough time to complete this project. As I said at the beginning of this video, I embroider upwards of 10 pairs of shoes every week, but this is my full-time job and I've been doing it for years now, so I can't even feel my fingers anymore, you know, I wish that was a joke. But what I mean to say is you really shouldn't rush this, especially if it's your very first embroidery project. Even if it's your first ever shoe embroidery project, you need to give yourself enough time to complete it. Don't expect to have a finished pair of shoes in your hands within the same day of starting the project. Unless you're an embroidery prodigy and you have a spare 12 to 15 hours to put in, then I guess you could have a finished pair within the same day. But I recommend you give yourself at least two weeks to finish your first pair of shoes and that's if you're like wanting to enjoy the process like doing 30 minutes here and there like up to an hour what I really want you to stay clear of is straining your fingers and hurting yourself in a rush to finish this pair of shoes it will be so 
much more fun if you take your time and kind of savor the process. And I think it'll make you more likely to want to create more shoes after you finish this first pair. I've been embroidering since I was like eight years old. And when I embroidered my first pair of shoes at like, what was it? 21? 21? 21. When I embroidered my first pair of shoes at 21, it took me a good week to finish them because my fingers were aching. It's quite a lot of strain pulling the needle up through the thicker shoe fabric. So I think it's a really good idea to just give your fingers and your hands a bit of rest in between your embroidery periods, especially because this is meant to be fun. This is supposed to be a fun hobby. That's what I tell myself. Please don't hurt yourself trying to embroider a pair of shoes. They're cute, but I don't think it's worth it. Just let me make you a pair if it's going badly, okay? I'm happy to step in. <laughs> And those are my tips and tricks on how to embroider a pair of shoes. I hope this was helpful, at least semi-educational. I'm trying to become better at being comfortable in front of the camera. And I know I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, but thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed to this channel so far. I just cannot stop smiling. 8,000 people are here on this channel in this little embroidery, cute, crafty community. And it's just really heartwarming. I am so glad to have you all here and if you're watching this and you've gotten to the end of this video and you haven't subscribed yet, I would absolutely love it if you did and maybe give this video a like and maybe leave me a comment if you have any questions or if you have any requests for future videos, I am totally open to requests so let me know. Thank you all again so much for being here and I will see you in my next video. Bye!